So here's some examples. Let's see. This is, oh, speaking of good time rock and roll, this is Tom Cruise in uh, uh, Risky Business. Okay, Tom Cruise in Risky Business. All right, he's actually singing good time rock and roll in his underwear, that little, that little douchebag, Tom Cruise. What type of license do you need? This is a quiz. Well, for this type of license, right, or for this type of use, you need what? You need a master use license because you're using Bob Seger's good time rock and roll, right? And then you need to get a sync license for whoever wrote that, okay, for syncing it with a visual element. Ah! Here's a good one. Otis Day in Animal House. Hmm, what type of licenses do you need? Now, the thing about this is, this is used in a movie, right? So it's synced. So you have to, you have to get a sync license for the composer and the lyricist, whoever wrote that, which I think is Otis Day in this instance. But the performance of those lyrics is, and the recording is actually live on set. So you don't need no master use license for this because it's the, the version, you know, it's just essentially a, a cover version. So you could get a compulsory mechanical license for the soundtrack to put this on like the soundtrack or whatever, but to use it in the movie, to do a cover version in the, in the movie, you need to get a sync license. And royalties, again, are paid up a lump sum up front. Oh, here's a, an example. One of the shittiest video games ever made, DJ Hero. <laughs> what type of licenses do you need? Well, it's a video game, right? So you need, you hear the music, so you need a master use license for the sound recordings that you hear, and then you need a sync license for the uh, lyrics and composition that are in that sound recording. Remember, those two discrete copyrights. Musical work, the composition and lyrics, and the sound recording master use. All right, you're at a game at Autzen. Who gets paid and how? Well, hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's say uh, a Britney Spears, no, nah, I'm sick of saying Britney Spears, but whatever. Uh, uh, a Kendrick Lamar song is played at Autzen, just over the speakers. Who gets paid? Hmm, and how? Well, let's just say that this. The recording artist does not get paid because there's no performance rights for sound recordings in the United States. So Kendrick Lamar does not get paid for the sound recording. However, he does get paid if he wrote the lyrics. And whoever made the beat also gets paid because it's considered a performance of a musical work, a musical work being composition and lyrics. So that's how he would get paid. That money would be collected by ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI, and then use the math and, and pay him out in that way. Now, if, let's say, they, um, they you know, make a video to hype up the crowd and... <clears throat> It uses King Kunta or something like that, you know, to get people hyped up. And they make a video of like, you know, you know, football highlights and stuff. That's different. You need to get a hmm, master use license to use King Kunta. And then you also need to get a sync license to sync the lyrics and composition in King Kunta with the video that you make. Let's say a band the, the marching band does a live version, cover version of King Kunta. Who gets paid, how, what type of license you need? You don't need no license. It's a performance of the lyrics and or in the composition of King Kunta, right? The performance rights organizations like ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI collect the royalties for that and pay it out. If the band wanted to do uh, the marching band wanted to do a cover version of it and record it and sell it on a CD. They need a compulsory mechanical license to do a cover version of, of that. All right, when music is played on the radio, on a boom box, on the radio that you hear, who gets paid, how, whatever, it's kind of the same as uh, K. Dot at Autzen, meaning this. There are no performance rights 
in the United States. So there's no performance rights for sound recordings. So when a, a, a piece of music is played on the radio, it's the recording artist and record label do not get paid for that shit. Kendrick does not get paid for that. However, if he wrote the lyrics and did the composition to that music, he gets performance rights for that. He gets paid royalties for that that again are collected by ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI for that shit. That's, 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 how, that, that's how that works, straight up. Um, now it's different for uh, Spotify. Um, there are performance rights for satellite, digital, radio, streaming, um, etc. for sound recordings, but not for um, you know, regular terrestrial radio. Okay, there's performance rights for the, the work, the composition. And this goes back to way back in the day, John Philip Sousa. When radio first started, they needed cheap programming. Where did they go? They, they went to basically the music industry, the, the record industry, and they started playing you know, records that were made by record companies. And um, the recording industry you know, was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you know, like, you're pirating our shit for like cheap content and radio went well listen chill um we're promoting the sale of your records but we're afraid of john philip sousa because he don't have no mouth and he's got lots of medals and a crazy beard like we'll pay him and so that's kind of been like the standard for terrestrial radio that you hear and you 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 know it's non-digital radio is that it's considered the promotion of sound recordings but they'll pay for the performance of lyrics and compositions in those sound recordings on radio. A parody version of a song. Parody version of a song, I said. The lyrics, right, when Weird Al does a parody version of Michael Jackson's Beat It, he does Eat It, right, he's making fun of the lyrics, that's fair use. However, he does his own cover version of the instrumental, of the composition. So he needs to get a compulsory mechanical license, which allows him to do a cover version of the song. In this case, he's just using the beat or the, um, the instrumental that he's not making fun of so that he can make fun of the lyrics. So you do need a license for, for the composition. Yo, political rallies. Listen, what type of license you need, who gets paid? When uh, Overlord Trumpito uh, comes out to music at a, at a campaign rally, and there was a bunch of shit with this where he's like playing like Born in the USA in 2016, and like Bruce Springsteen was like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You know, the boss was like, oh, hell no. You can do that shit, um, and here's why. Most of the places where uh, campaign rallies take place are at venues of some sort. Most of those venues have, they pay performance rights to, um, you know, ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI who collect for the performance of composition and lyrics that are fixed in recordings. Again, when you play Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA at Autzen, he don't get paid. Right, like for the sound recording. If he wrote the lyrics and the composition, he gets, he gets paid for the performance of those. The same for a political rally. The sound recording don't matter as long as those places pay, you know, ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI, the, uh, the person who wrote the lyrics and the composition get, gets paid. Now, for a lot of political rallies, they would actually secure uh, performance licenses for the, um, for the composition and lyrics because they may do a rally at like an airport hangar, which maybe doesn't have a ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI license. Now, the difference would be this. If uh, Overlord Trumpito made a, um, you know, a video that he played at his rallies using Born in the USA, then he would need to get a master use license. You know what I'm saying? that pays the record label and, and good old Brucey boss. And then he'd has to also get a sync license that would pay the publishing company and whoever wrote the lyrics and composition in, in that. Okay, here's a nice little Charty McCharterton that kind of breaks it down. So situation, I want to sample someone's beat. Who gets paid, right? Um, 
a record label and recording artists and a publishing company and the songwriters get paid. What type of license do I need? I need a master use license for the rec uh, from the record label um, for the sound recording and I need a mechanical license uh, and I'm going to pay based on sales uh, from the publishing company on behalf of the songwriters. I want to record a cover version of a song, right? Uh, who gets paid? Publishers and songwriters get paid and they, I'll get a compulsory mechanical license to, to do um, a cover version and they get royalties based upon sales. If I want to use um, music in a video game, film, TV, ad, or whatever, I got to get um, a master use license from the record label and that pays royalties to the recording artist and that's going to be an upfront fee and then based upon sales. Um, and then I need to get a sync license um, uh, from the publishing company that pays uh, royalties to the songwriters and composers. And this is an upfront paid up lump sum. Ah, I want to do, uh, you know, recorded music played at a venue on radio, political rally, etc. Publishers and songwriters are the ones who get paid and there's performance right ro royalties that are collected by ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI. And the venues, they pay fees to ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI annually um, based upon how large their venue is, how many people can hold, how many speakers they have, approximately how many events they have, etc., etc., etc. A cover version performed live. Publishers and songwriters are the ones who get paid. And this is, again, performance rights um, collected by ASCAP, CSAC, and, and BMI. Spotify, right? Who gets paid? The record label and recording artists get paid a digital performance right. So there's digital performance rights for Spotify, for YouTube, for Pandora, for uh, satellite radio, uh, whatever, online radio. Um, um, and that's a digital performance collected by Sound Exchange. And uh, who also gets paid? Publishers and songwriters get, get performance and mechanicals um, in, this, in this instance. They get performance and mechanicals um, you know, uh, when their music is pl played um, or streamed on, on Spotify. So that gives you a sense of that.